Recent events and happenings in Kenyan politics have made very many Kenyans completely give up hope about the political class. And yet there are many other Kenyans who realize a simple truth. This is something that we cannot afford to give up on. It is something that we do not have the luxury of having the option of giving up. Because we are talking about the Kenya that we are going to leave behind for our children and our great-grandchildren. During a very dramatic last few days, we have had a book written titled How to Fight Corruption in Government. A yeah, very good title. The author, William Samoy Ruto. <laughs> You know, sometimes if you're handling a prospective presidential candidate, one of the very important decisions you have to make is which battles to get involved in and which ones to steer clear away from. Because every human being under the sun has their strengths and their weaknesses. King David is considered one of the best leaders, the best king the nation of Israel ever had. But he had a weakness, women. But thousands of years later, we remember him as a great warrior and a great leader. So highlight the strengths of your candidate and avoid like the plague, yeah, taking your candidate anywhere near where his weaknesses will be exposed. I'm surprised that even the deputy president's handlers yeah, do not realize that any discussion he tries to have on fighting corruption, on how to fight corruption, on how to handle graft, even his staunchest supporters will feel embarrassed. They'll bow their heads down. We had yet another book written this week titled How to Identify Half-Baked Stories from Shadowy Sources by ODM The Party. Now that is super fascinating because there is no other political party in the history of Kenya that has been most responsible for hijacking the Kenyan press. And Mwai Kibaki, President Mwai Kibaki, felt that heat in the run-up to the fateful 2007 presidential elections. The powerful president of Kenya was reduced to crisscrossing the country yeah, and mounting speakers to get his message directly to the people. Because he knew there was no way that message was going to get through the press. You know the nation media group is facing many challenges and it is emerging that one strategy they are using to regain their old image is to go the extra mile yeah, to get unique stories, big stories without worrying who it will affect or who it will not affect. And obviously now ODM cannot handle that. In my view, where we are going is going to be very unfamiliar territory to the Kenyan voter and very challenging, but of course very necessary. And that is thorough scrutiny of the character of the person you want to elect. I predict even voters faced with a person who belongs to their own tribe will still want to scrutinize in great detail the character of that candidate. Believe it or not, I see things changing. But there's no guarantee that they'll change for the better. Because there's nothing more complex than the character of a man. Let me give you a brief story. My late political lecturer was on a police airwing aircraft in Mombasa, 
ready to take off. When they were told that the takeoff was going to be delayed for a few minutes because they had an extra passenger. Minutes later, a man with spectacles and having great difficulties walking was ushered into the aircraft. My political lecturer recognized him immediately. His name was Martin Chikuku. A political detainee. Now in those days we used to have something called detention without trial. If the government thought you a nuisance, yeah, they took you off the streets and kept you at a secret location for as long as they felt like. My late political lecturer really admired this man, told me a lot of great things about this great Kenyan. Years later, I believe it must have been 2004, when I was working for a solar energy company, I noticed Martin Shikuku in the waiting area. Yeah, he was being kept waiting. Nobody could recognize him. Our young salespeople had an attitude yeah, about attending to old men. Yeah, they said they were cumbersome. They asked funny questions, etc., etc. It took them too long to understand yeah, some of the technical details. <laughs> they didn't realize that seated in that waiting room was one of the most important political figures in the history of Kenya. I was supposed to be head of the department, but I stopped everything I was doing and went to personally attend to Martin Shukuku. I have a weakness for Kenyans who give up their personal comfort to fight for a better Kenya. And as I demonstrated the solar equipment he needed, I sneaked in a few political questions, but I noticed he dodged most of them. And even as he purchased what he had come to purchase, my parting words were, Kenyans will never forget the sacrifice you've given. But at the back of my mind, I asked myself, what happened to Martin Shikuku? Because towards the end of his career, Martin Shikuku changed. It was not the same Martin Shikuku who had risked so much, fought so much for a better Kenya. My point is, the character of a man is very complex. You can have an excellent track record before you're elected into office. And then once you're inside the state house, <laughs> a new you emerges. Maybe the power gets into your head. Or maybe something happens, like in the case of Martin Shikuku. Because clearly something happened that cracked the old Martin Shikuku. Broke him. Changed him. You know, I will never forget 
the look on the face of my political lecturer when I later told him that I'd actually met and chatted with Martin Shikuku for a very long time, over two hours. All he could say was, I don't know what happened to that fellow. But folks, we cannot give up. And if we trust in God Almighty, we will get the leader who will help us to usher in a brand new Kenya so that we live a much better country for those coming after us. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.